Hi, in this video, we're going to be, this series of videos, we're going to be working through a GCSE paper. Please do stop the video, have a go at each of the questions, then compare your solutions. Each of the videos is going to be about 20, 30 minutes or so. It should give you about an hour's worth of fairly focused revision. If you're not sure about anything, always add a comment. I'll come back to you and I'll look forward to seeing you inside the video. Hi, this is the third video where we're looking at the June 2019 and it's the Edexcel Maths Paper 3 for the higher tier. OK, and the previous um, video we completed through to question number 20. So we're going to start with this one from question number 21 onwards. Please do stop the video. Have a go at each of the questions. And this particular one is a histogram and it gives information about the weights of some onions. OK, so what we need to do is work out the value of each of these blocks. So what we've got is the weight and we've got the frequency density. So we can use a formula. We can actually basically say that frequency density equals frequency divided by class class width. OK, and we can do that for each of these blocks in order to work out the value of each one, because if we look at the first block, well, we've got a frequency density of two and we've got a class width of 60. OK, so in that block is going to be two equals frequency divided by class width. Oh, sorry, uh, class width of 60. OK, change that to 60. So therefore, if we multiply through by 60, it means the frequency for that particular first block is going to be 120. So what we're basically saying is there are 120 onions represented in that first block. And what we're going to do now is the same for each of the other blocks. OK, so the next one, I'm going to write frequency density equals frequency over class width. OK, so for the next block, I've got a frequency density of five. Uh, frequency, I don't know. Class width is going to be 30. So for the second block, it's a frequency of 150. OK, now just for the purposes of this video, uh, you can see this is five, which is what I've just used. And the frequency uh, class width is going to a big one. The class width is going to be 30. So that would be 150. And all we'll do is we'll work through each of these. But I won't keep moving the paper backwards and forwards because otherwise it could be distracting on the video. OK. So for the third block, that's going to be a uh, frequency density of nine. Uh, frequency and class width is going to be 30. So that block is going to be 270. Um, so I'll put that one in here. That's going to be 270. OK, now the only slight wrinkle with this one is we need to know this value because we need to know the class width. OK, well, um, the way to do that is to basically say, well, I know that um, it's halfway between 120 and 150. And you'd really have to get very, very close to the actual grid itself to be able to figure that one out. But if I want halfway, I've got 120 plus 150 all divided by two means that that value must be 135. So this is 135. So you'd have to really print the paper and have a go at that. But uh, you'll have to just kind of trust me at the moment that it is correct on that one. OK, so uh, on that block, I've got frequency density equals frequency divided by class width. Um, and that's a frequency density of going to be of six. And that's equal to F, I don't know, but the class width is going to be 15. So therefore, in that block, it must be equal to 90. And then I might as well do the final one. Frequency Frequency density is frequency over class width. OK, well, that's going to be 2 equals a frequency um, and then 45. So that's going to be also 90 as well. So what we do know is these final blocks, that one's 90 and that one's 90. And that would be the amount of onions that are in those particular groupings. OK, so therefore we can use this information then to figure out the total frequency because all we're doing is then adding up all of these numbers so we've got 120 
plus 150 plus 270 plus 90 plus 90. Add them all together, that's going to give us 720. So this particular farmer has grown 720 onions for that particular crop or that, that year. OK, seems very low to me, but there we are. I'm sure that they grow a lot more than 720 onions. OK, <laughs> right. So if we move on then to part B or the second part of the question, OK, we've then got to fill out or take some information from this particular pie chart and what it says on the actual text is that um, onions less than 60 grams in weight to use for pickling okay well these are the onions that are um, used for pickling which is 120 and then it also says that onions greater than 120 well that's going to be 90 plus 90 so that's going to be 180 so therefore we can actually take that information and put it straight onto our pie chart because we know that this is 120 out of 720 onions are used for pickling and we know that those sold at the market are going to be 180 out of 720 so what's actually left is 420 out of 720 which very conveniently works out as 7 twelfths if you reduce it so if we want to find out the value of x all we're doing really is we're saying the value of x is going to equal 700 uh, sorry 7 twelfths of 360 degrees which is going to be 210 degrees and actually that's the answer to that particular question this value of x here will be 210 degrees okay hopefully that's been okay for you it did take a little bit of working out but uh, you know it's one of those things that um, uh, it's just a bit trickier to begin with but once you get used to those sorts of questions they're okay bear in mind it is a higher pay so they are, the questions are going to be a bit more challenging. OK, so let's move on then to this one. Um, I'm going to aim to finish the, all of these questions on this particular video. We've only got uh, this question and the next one to go. Right, so what we've got here is we're going to find the value of P, which is basically this. Now, what you'll spot with that is that is that the value of P here, or these coordinates, are on the radius of the circle. OK, so it kind of makes sense to work out the radius of the circle. OK, now we can do that because if we can imagine if I draw a line from O to A, um, because we're meeting a tangent, then this will be a 90 degrees. Now, O to A is um, the radius of the circle, which is fantastic. And also um, it allows us then to uh, work out this point over here. You'll see what I mean in a minute or two. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to draw another little sketch just to get this piece of information just kind of separately. So what I've got here is effectively, and I'm just almost copying this, this is 16 units along this is the tangent and the 90 degrees. Um, this is, if you like, O to A, and this is A to B. And we're told that this is 30 degrees. But what we can do then is we can use Sokatoa. Because if you can imagine, the radius itself is actually the opposite to the value of the 30 degrees at, at angle B. And it's actually that radius that we're interested in. OK, we also know this length along here, which is the hypotenuse. So we're going to use the sine relationship. We can say the sine of 30 degrees equals the opposite, which is the bit we're interested in, divided by 16. Now, if I multiply both sides by 16, I get the opposite very conveniently, is equal to 8, which is brilliant. So what that's telling us is the actual radius of the circle is 8 units. OK, so we can then use the formula for an actual circle, which is going to be x squared plus y squared equals r squared. And bear in mind, remember, we're trying to find the, um, um, the value of p. Now, if you look at... Um, this here, it means the value of x is going to be 3p and the value of y is going to be p. So I can plug these directly into x squared plus y squared equals r squared. OK, so rather than writing x squared, what I'm going to do is write 3p 
squared because that's my value of x. Rather than writing y, I'm going to write p squared because that's my value of y. And then I know that r is going to be 8, so therefore r squared is 64. And then really it's just a case of solving for p. OK, so let's look at this. Now, unfortunately, it's not a particularly neat solution. I thought it might be when I first looked at it. But what you end up with is 10p squared equals 64. So therefore p squared equals 6.4. So p equals the square root of 6.4, which is a pretty horrible number of p equals 2.52. Nine eight, okay, and that's why I should have spotted it. But they do say in the instru in the uh, instructions here or the question, give your answer correct to one decimal place. I should have realised it wasn't going to be so neat. Uh, so one decimal place, the value of p is going to be two point five, and that would be the answer to that particular question to 1dp. Again, if you're not sure about anything, please do stop the video, ask a question below. It's perfectly fine. I'll always come back to you and uh, I'll always try to help you if I possibly can. OK, so let's move on to the final question on this particular paper, which is question number 23. So this is uh, partly bearings. Uh, we also have to use um, cosine rule and sine rule with this. So what we're being asked to do is find the bearing of Chawton from Acton. OK, well, <laughs> OK, so if you're in Acton and you're heading towards Chawton, basically we want to know this angle here. It's this one here. OK, now that's going to be slightly tricky, but in order for us to find that out, what we're going to do first is we're going to find out this length along here. Now, the reason we're going to do that is because it allows us then to use the sine rule. So the first thing I'm going to do is try to sort of figure out some of the angles. Well, I know then that using alternate angles, this must be also 37 degrees. Sorry, corresponding angles. OK, so if that's 37 degrees, it means this must be 113 degrees. It also, because it's a straight line, if I take 130 degrees away from it, it means this angle in here must be 67 degrees. Now, that's important to us to know that because then it allows us to work out AC. So the uh, formula we're going to use, and I'll try to leave as much on the screen as I possibly can for you, but the formula we're going to use is a squared equals b squared plus c squared minus 2bc cosine a. So it's your standard cosine rule. OK, now we're told this is 8 and this is 9. So I'm going to make that a, I'm going to make that b, I'm going to make this um, 67 degrees as C, the value of C. I'm sorry, it's not very easy to see there. OK, I'll just try and make that 67 for you. OK, so let's have a look and see if we can put that together a little bit. So B is going to be 8 squared plus C is 9 squared minus 2. I'm just put a dot in there just because it's a little bit neater. It means multiply 2 times 8 times 9 times the cosine of 67 degrees. Put all that into a calculator and what I end up with is that a squared equals 88.734 dot 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 and therefore a is going to be the square root of that which is 9.4199. So in other words what we're saying is is that this length along here is 9.4199. Okay now that's important to us because it allows us then to to use the sine rule because if I know this angle and I know this length I can work out this angle because I know this length okay so what I can say is actually the sine I'm going to call this x now so the sine of x over 9 is equal to the sine of 67 over 9.4199 okay so let's just write that in so I've got the sine of x over 9 is equal to the sine of 67 divided by 9.4199. OK, so therefore I can now use this formula to find out the value of the actual sine. OK, so sine of x equals 9 times 
uh, sine of 67 divided by 9.4199. However, it is fair to say I'm not interested in the sine. I'm actually interested in the angle. So just be very careful about this. What you need to do is put this into a calculator as the inverse trick. OK, so you'd use the shift and sign key on your calculator and when you calculate that you should get an angle of 61.5788 okay now bearing in mind that that is this angle here 61.578 so that would get you most of the marks on this particular question but don't forget that bearings are from the north clockwise so we've got to add that angle to 37 degrees and when we've got that that will be the actual bearing which uh, if I just write here is going to be therefore uh, bearing is going to be equal to 37 plus 61.5788 add all of that together you're going to get 98.578 degrees okay and then in the actual question it asks you for one decimal place so the actual answer will be 98.6 degrees and that would be the answer to that final question and also the final question on this particular video um, i hope it has been useful to you please do add a comment below if you're not sure about anything i'll always come back to you i look forward to seeing you inside the next video